Welcome to <laughs> Ask GMBN Tech, where you get to ask us questions. It's great. Yeah, okay. Well, someone's asked us a question, so <laughs> here we go. Bin Man says, and that's his name, Bin Man says, says, okay. after you've plugged a tire on a ride, what do you do when you're home uh, to fix it properly? Uh, or is that the job done? Sometimes it is the job done, yeah. if you're lucky. Although if you're a little bit worried about it and you don't want it to get accidentally ripped out of uh, the tire when you're next on your ride, you can use some glue. So uh, it will be glue, if you've got any puncture repair kits lying around, the glue that's used to stick those patches onto old inner tubes and whatnot is really good for this sort of thing. So I've actually done this on a previous video, so I'll leave the link in the description below, uh, but you can literally just glue around the uh, little plug. Uh, maybe inside if you're feeling like you've got a lot of time on your hands in the evening and you want to dry out your tire and do the inside but just the outside will probably work for now and do make sure that you've cut it down short so that it doesn't get accidentally ripped out when you're riding got another question here really this one's a good one uh this one is from anon sends i'm not sure if you're anonymous or you send but either way it's very good <laughs> hi guys uh why can motorbikes be one size fits all uh to suit all riders and reduce cost by standardizing production etc and mountain bikes have to come in just small extra small, medium, large, and XL. What difference between a motorbike and a mountain bike? Bar the pedaling. Mm. Why couldn't mountain bikes have a standard frame size to suit everyone? Um, I mean, yeah, I think you've actually nailed it in your question there, um, because bar the pedaling, it's a huge difference. So versus that, obviously there's a lot more to a motorbike. You've got to pull the clutches, you've got to do gears, you've got to do a lot. Essentially to provide locomotion to it, you're just, yeah, throttle twisting. Whereas on a bike, the ergonomics and how that's set up are really, really individual. So whilst I'm only 170 centimetres tall or 5'7 in old money, I need a really high saddle because my proportions are quite unique. Um, so yeah, if we had one size fits all, we wouldn't have enough adjustment range um, between you know different, different heights. I'm relatively small at like 5'7". We've got someone on GCN who's over two meters and there's no way that we could make a frame that would work for both of us to work. Um, well, back in the day, there was a little bit of one size fits all, both in road, if you go far back enough, and in mountain biking. Well, and it wasn't great for people, was it? I, I mean, mean, at least the saddles were adjustable. Well, no, degree. yeah. So penny farthings oh, did come in okay, sizing. You go that so no, we back, did, yes. yeah, yeah. So we did have sizing. It is a, I mean, it didn't make me look like it, but there was a lot of sizing on yeah. bikes. So there's been a lot written by, there's like Italian bike fit back in the day, then the French had their own fit book. Um, and then luckily we've gone very scientific and we've got lasers and lots of smoke and mirrors about bike fit. But no, there, there's always <laughs> been a kind of variety of sizes. Um, and there's a little bit of sizing on motorbikes, I will say, because I'm of the short disposition as well. I'm five foot one. Um, and I cannot, when I tried to start doing motocross, I could not fit on a proper, uh, size bike so I actually had to have a big wheeled uh, 125 um, which oh, is like a small right. actually a small wheeled um, and that was the only way I could touch the ground and there are some road bikes out there that are better suited for small riders um, and they are closer to the ground or perhaps they're not as long not as racy um, so there is a little bit of fit in it but you're absolutely right we pedal we don't just go like that yeah. so it's probably a little bit more important uh, Timo Lotov uh, says, hello, since you guys uh, have much experience with nuke proof, I'm hoping to get some advice. I'm 1.79 meters and the sizing chart on the website says I'm uh, medium is up to 178 and a large is from 178. So you're just over. So you're wondering that age old debate, do I size up or do I size down? Where do I fall? Um, it's a really good question. What I always do, because uh, although I'm really small and often I I do go into that very, very small bracket. Sometimes I fit between a small and extra small. And the thing that I do is to go on to, um, well, basically compare the geometry charts. And there's two numbers that I particularly look for, and that is the top tube measurement, which is obviously the top tube of the bike, uh, which gives you a feel of how long it will feel or how big the bike will feel when you're sat down. And then there's the reach number, um, which is a little bit more complicated. I'll put a graph on the screen right now, um, but that will give 
give you an indication of how big a bike will feel when you're stood up, so perhaps descending or out of the saddle pedaling. Um, and effectively, what I will do is I will compare it to other bikes that I liked in the past because different brands have a different idea of what medium or what large is. Um, and if you have a particular length of bike in mind and that you like, then maybe you would just want to stick with that. So you can actually go onto geometrygeeks.com and put in your new models, perhaps that Noot Proof in medium and that Noot Proof in large, and then compare it to your existing bike and see which one is closest and maybe go for that instead. Yeah, I'd say there's front center as well. So we talk about top tube, we talk about virtual top tube, which is mm -hmm sort of like an extended stack or reach, if you like. Um, so those are also kind of measurements to look at. I'd say the bigger problem that you're going to have is that the medium or the large might not be there anymore, so you might be forced to choose. Oh, because, because it's a new proof. Yeah, new proof sadly departing in their current guys. So yeah, um, if you're between, just get the one that's there. That's what I'd say. Not normally <laughs> something I'd say is I'd like, make sure that you get the right size. It's really important, but you're only a centimetre out, so just get the one that's there. Another good question here. And don't forget, you can ask any question to Ask GMBN Tech uh, in the comments, possibly even... Any as... question. Any question, Cool. Yeah. All right. I mean, tech ones are probably more useful yeah. because questions <laughs> about life, the universe and everything uh, we might be challenged on. This one's a bit of a challenging question too, actually. It's a good one. This one's from Life of Malik, and he's saying, uh, is it a good idea to buy different suspension for your bike? Um, with different, I mean different brands or models. So I assume this, you're asking if you've got a bike and it's got rock shocks front and rear and you're wanting to upgrade to Fox, whether that's gonna kind of change things because you're saying that manufacturers spend a lot of money for the tuning of their, their forks and shocks with, with brands. Um, and you're right to, to a degree, some bikes are designed around certain shocks. I mean, some of the Treks with their, their Flex Link, some of the Specialized have been designed directly with that. But quite a lot of bikes these days are gonna work with a variety of different shocks. You talk about here, will it mess up the kinematics? Kinematics, you probably won't mess up because those are hardwired into the, the geometry of the bike. Um, and I say the geometry, I mean the linkage of the suspension system. So the spring rate and how that shock is pushed by the linkage is, is hardwired there. Okay, it might change if there's some kind of flip chips or anything like that, but essentially that's all set. You're right to mention tunes, and often shocks, uh, more so rear shocks, they'll have a little symbol on them to show you what kind of compression tune or rebound tune, or both, that that shock will have. Um, so if you're getting a new bike, new shock rather, you'd be able to upgrade to make sure it's got, got that tune on it. So maybe it's a really high compression or it's a really low compression tune. Um, but I would say that if you're getting a new shock, you will be able to tune it a lot. We can change air volume in shocks by putting the spacers in. We can play around with rebound. And also you could take it to a shock tuner and really go wild and change the shim stack if you really wanted to. Um, so yeah, I'm not sure if that answers your question directly. It feels well, it digs it a does. bigger hole. No, because but... I've done something very similar on my okay. Enduro bikes. So um, last year, my Nuke Proof Mega, uh, I took it to a service center and they read the model and told me that it was effectively a medium tune because that's what Nuke Proof thought would be appropriate for most riders with that bike. But me, being a really light rider, I quite like light tunes. Uh, so we were able just to change the shim stack on that and make it a light tune. So effectively, you can buy off the shelf a assuming the shock actually fits yep. and everything fits in your frame. Um, and it might be a medium tune or it might be a heavy tune and maybe you want it to be the same as what it was before or what the manufacturer suggests or maybe you want it your own special tune. You can just go to a service center and get that done. Okay, so uh, Rock LT 21 says, do you know of any flat pedals that comes with a long spindle? I can't seem to find any online or in bike shops. Why is this? There's plenty of options with clipless. Yeah, you're absolutely right. There is a bit of a difference, um, mainly because, uh, well, I'm gonna say, because with clipless, your feet are properly locked and there's no opportunity to take a wide stance like you can on flat pedals. Uh, with flat pedals, you can uh, often buy different sizes, which which do allow you to move your feet placements out a little bit. Whereas with clipless, um, 
They're not so big, are they? The platforms yeah, no, are not so big, like there's not much set. room for movement. Yeah. So they do offer those extra long spindles. Um, whether you can find spindles that you can rebuild into your pedal and make them longer uh, is another matter. I've struggled to find this, and it depends what you're running in terms of what your pedals are, you haven't said. Um, that's another matter. But maybe uh, if you want a wider stance, then start thinking about your foot placement and if you can buy bigger pedals for yeah. a bigger surface area. Like Crank Brothers do well. the, the large version of their stamps pretty much all the way through mm. their range. And they're, they're not just kind of larger front to back, they're, they're wider as well. So that would be a great way of improving your kind of Q factor, if you like. Um, it's a tricky one. Yeah, I'm not sure whether there aren't more, but larger pedal does make sense because it moves your Q factor out and you'll probably have bigger feet as well. So yeah, hopefully that answers your question. Final <laughs> question for this ask, but obviously get your hashtag AskGMBN Tech questions in. Um, this one is from Paddy222, we'll say. Um, sorry, Paddy, for butchering your name. Uh, so, he's got a Shimano rear hub, specifics are there in the question, with a micro spline free hub. Can he convert it in rabbit ears back to a HG body to take a link like a set? Like, I've spent a lot of time, <laughs> and so is Anna, trying to hunt this down. We've been looking at lots of schematics, and unfortunately, I I just don't, I just don't think so. So I'm, I'm slightly devoted because I'm very, very excited by Link Glide. I think I'm, it's just... Really? Yeah. I think, um, it, I think it's just enough. Like, Link Glide 11 speed, I'm really happy. I've got older XT mm. 11 speed and it's really good. I've got it is pretty really good, good range and it lasts for but ages. Also, 12 speed is also really good. You've got a micro spline hub that you obviously want to use as a nice modern wheel um, and you can get a Dior cassette in 12 speed Okay, it's not Link Glide, but it's made fully out of steel. I mean, that thing's going to last well as well, surely. It will do. I think I, I think that's one option. That's a great <laughs> option. Mine is get a really nice wheel, like a Hope one, and then you can oh. have Link Glide, and then you can have HD on it, and it'd be so really nice. So you're saying build a whole new hub into a wheel? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, and the, but then the link glide is meant to last three times longer. It's really good. Okay, the lever throw is different, so the, I can't use my old school 11 speed, but it looks the genuinely really The cost of really a new exciting. wheel versus three cassettes. Like yeah. Actually, that might no, actually exactly. add up. <laughs> See, there you go. <laughs> okay, right, well. on that bombshell. <laughs> yeah, that's all we've got time for. But if you have a, an opinion on whether to rebuild a wheel or buy three cassettes instead, then let us know down in the comments below. Alternatively, if you have a burning question, use hashtag ask GMBN Tech in the comments of any of our videos and we'll try and pick it up on a show like this. Otherwise, thank you for watching.